One. Everybody, I'm Omega Casting with Sierra Lambda for the Day Night Show matches. Tonight we have Dave Sprite versus Force Fields Series 3, which is going to be a best of five. And this one, a little unusually, uh, actually was played via replays. Replays have been sent in to us, so we won't be having any interviews with the players uh, beforehand. Uh, if there's time and Dave Sprite is still around, we might bring him on as Octos briefly. But uh, for the most part, we're just going to be focusing on the games tonight. And. Uh, However, still, for the sake of having an intro of some kind, first of all, Zero, how are you doing this fine evening? I'm doing okay. A little bit of a headache today, but nothing uh, nothing some leave can't fix. Ooh, that, took, that sucks. Uh, took some of that, got some caffeine in me, so hopefully that'll uh, circumvent the problems, but nope. No, yeah, it, it should or cost you to pass out. <laughs> no. Caffeine is interesting. Yeah, I don't like. want to pass out. That's scary. That sounds scary. Yes, this would be. Yes, it would be. <laughs> but, but no, uh, uh, we had um had some good heroes games earlier. Yeah, those are pretty good. We won pretty much every single one. I think we won like three or four, something like that. We didn't lose, so. Oh well, yeah. I mean, it was kind of the after the other day we had where you know, typical losing streak. By the way, for those of you who haven't played that game yet or don't intend to, if you've played StarCraft and you notice how incredibly streaky StarCraft can get, it's not any different. It's like, it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> yeah, MMR definitely tries to keep you 50-50, and it's an extremely frustrating experience. So, but yeah, no. I mean, other than that, that's that's what we got. Yeah, pretty uh, normal just, uh, stuff. Uh, excited for a uh, show match tonight. So here's, here's a question. Here's a, here's a kind of, like, discussion question before we get started. Oh, uh, sure, sure. You know, we know Legacy of the Void Bait is coming soon. Uh-huh. Right? That's It's going to happen. The question is, how soon do you think they'll do it? Like, yeah, obviously they're going to keep kind of half hyping it because they're showing stuff at PAX. We'll probably talk about it. But um, if you could somehow influence when it was coming out, when, when would you want it? Judging from the stuff running around on Twitter and on the forum and on Reddit and things like that lately, you know, they're, I mean, they're getting really close. So I would be surprised if we didn't have it by March. Yeah, I, personally, what I'm expecting to see happen is it will probably pop out at the end of the season. I, I think they're going to be trying to careful oh, to really? try and not steal any attention away from WCS. Like, maybe the end of March. End of the season? Wow, interesting. Because, I mean, it, it, that's one of the scary things that could happen. You get to the finals of the WCS, the Legacy of the Void beta comes out, and suddenly no one gives a shit. That would be bad. Yeah, you gotta... Well, given the fact that esports, the StarCraft esports scene is kind of Blizzard's baby now. But at least I would expect something like that. But then again, I mean, we saw what they did with Hearthstone, where they're like, so there's an expansion coming next month. And then they're like, we well, never do that. That's weird. And oh, yeah. they did. Yeah, so it's really weird. They, they said, yeah, it's going to be out this month. And then it was out this month. So, <laughs> yeah, not only did they announce the date accurately and like an, an advance, they never do that with anything. That's, so <laughs> that's who knows what they'll do. It, at the end of the day, though, obviously, as players, sooner the better, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kind of. We want we want to study a new meta, new or at the very least, change the swarm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's just me. I still have flashbacks of fire cakes run through WCS every now and again. I was like, oh my god, is this, oh, this night gonna end? You know, I hate watching fire cake. He's he's done a great job. You know, kudos to him. But the swarm house play is so excruciatingly boring. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, just every game versus a Protoss, he would swarm host. It was just uh, frustrating. I wanted to strangle him. Yeah. Well, in any case, I think we killed enough time. Let's go ahead and uh, start. Game number one between Dave Sprite and Force Fields was, yeah, excuse me, was played on Inferno Pools. Uh, I'll let you guys know. I do have this, this right over here. Pretty much the maps that were vetoed by the two players included. Uh, Expedition Lost, and what am I miss? Catalina. Those two maps were actually taken out of the pool, and the order of the maps was Inferno Pools, Overgrowth, Vani Research Station, Secret Spring, and Deadwing. Dear Q, so. if that ever happens, I'm going to cry on stream. We need a ZVZ show match with Look, Swarmos versus Swarmos. I think I would only be a little concerned if it was a diamond level players or higher doing it because I think <laughs> anybody else goes Swarmos, the game just ends quite like because they like threw their positioning up or the other person can't deal with it. That's that's been my experience with show with uh with Swarmos. 
Yeah. If it happens to time and they're higher, they might be competent, and that would be a problem. Uh, it's super. Just... I mean, we can kill time like nobody. Maybe other than Tastosis, they can kill time like nobody can. But uh, still, let's go ahead and get this game started. All right, go for it. Pearl Pools, game one. So what league is Dave Sprite and Forcefield in? These guys are plat? Yes, but they've both been the diamond. Both? So I put them in high plat, is okay. what I would say. Okay, high plat. High plat. Forcefield so, in particular is pretty, definitely diamondish. Pretty decent high level play, then, I say. Uh, yeah. Above high. gold. Now, oh man, so. Maybe the map was ordered um, by four player maps, so this is going to be kind of an interesting series. And uh, this one in particular. This is, I think, in any spawn map. I don't think spawns are restricted here in any way. Mm -hmm. so it should be it should be interesting. Should be a unique experience, yes. All right, loading in here. Oh, you've never been to Diamond. Okay, sorry about that, Dave Sprite. <laughs> you can clearly compete with people who have been to Diamond, though, so... My assessment still stands, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, uh, back to the game here. On the top of the map here, Inferno Pools, hanging out on the lava side of the map, we have our green Terran player, Dave Sprite. Yep, and in the bottom right of Inferno Pool, it's his opponent spawning as a Protoss player in orange. It is Force Field. A little bit of stutter here. You need a little bit of stutter on your end? Uh, not seeing anything here. Okay. Oh, that's comforting. <laughs> okay, just as a warning, guys, we've been having some technical issues with the internet today. We hope everything will be stable, but if it isn't, we're going to start running local copies of everything, and it'll you'll be able to watch it somewhere, don't worry. <laughs> oh. So far, nothing particularly insane happening. Both players building the usual buildings that you would expect. Constructing walls, constructing easy to fall zone out reaper things. I don't know what you call this when a Protoss does this, but that's what it's there for. It's there so that the reaper can't run around your mineral line for two years. Yep, that's pretty good. Nice block there in the back. Got one gas coming out yeah. for Force Field. We know Force Field is he's a fairly aggressive player. Last couple times we've seen him play, he's he's been all about the not necessarily four gate, but some some kind of one or two base play. Hmm. So Dave Sprite, it's probably good to get a get an early Reaper here with the the single gas, mm -hmm. so he can uh, kind of scout this out early and see what's going mm -hmm. on. There it is. There it is. Yeah, interesting way that lines up. It gets the orbital command and the Reaper at the exact same time. There's so many, like, mathematically beautiful things in StarCraft where, like, if you do something perfectly, stuff just happens at the same time. Oh, it's amazing. So cool. The, um, I've actually always wondered how they managed to do that that well. Like, if there's an algorithm or something that they apply that allows this to happen, or if they actually kind of work it all out, like, over time. Yeah, it'd be kind of scary if they had to work everything out. I think it, you know, it probably evolves as as the game engine evolves and things like that too. Earlier, later so, on in the patches and things like that. Now, so Forcefield makes it up here. He sees a uh, a reactor on here, which is important to find out as Protoss player. You know that um, unless he's got another barracks hidden somewhere, which shouldn't be happening since he saw this command center. Uh, you're not looking at somebody who's trying to go for a really fast stim or anything. It gives you a little bit more flexibility and also lets you know that. You're going to either have to get aggressive or get a Nexus pretty quickly. Yep, double Marine production is kind of scary as a Protoss player. More Marines equals more pain. I'm going to stalk her out here already who's coming in on the Mineral Line. The Reaper didn't get to the correct base initially. So, um, actually, is he? No, he's running the map just killing out the... That's a pretty nice move for Dave Sprite. Shutting that thing on early means a little less hidden hidden pylons. That's why Ed always gets a little frowny face from the protocol. You know, that would have been more <laughs> stupid and red. And I'm not happy to see that. But, however, it looks like he's going to try and uh, turn the favor. Yeah, probe kill. Oh, probe kill, nice. Very nice. Dropping the Nexus right after that. And the Reaper comes in and actually spots it. 
So apparently I am lagging really badly. A yeah, little, little robot again. Uh, nope, there's nothing I can do to fix that. Yeah, we're kind of stuck with what we got tonight, unfortunately. Uh, if it gets too bad on stream, we'll end up uh, going back to local. Which is... but. Bunker up front for Dave Sprite. Ward off any early attacks here. Force field, though. Content to build more gateways. We got four gates up. Or three gates in a robo, excuse me. Three gate robo is good against Terran. I love that play. Having an immortal versus uh, Terran units is always very nice. Okay. Um. You know what? There is something. That if Cross is up, my head is pretty. So sorry. <laughs> Can't see it anymore. Hopefully that, that, that. Hopefully that fixes it. Yeah. Force field getting an observer, sending it across the map here. Dave Sprite saturating his natural. He's getting one of the gases, too. On top of a factory and engineering bay. Mm -hmm. Maybe moving into either widow mines or tanks here. A little bit of gas to work with. Uh, I'm to try and see if we can. Mm -hmm. I did pick up on Twilight Council, which is helpful. This is the road. Well, it counts as pretty good. Good, good, good. And a forge. Forge is going to be good to keep up with the upgrades. The engineering bay is now down to plus one is on the way. Stim plaque. Stim plaque, yes, is halfway down. <laughs> Stim plaques. It's a disease of the mouth. Start Stim plaques? Point. Yeah, Stim plaques. It's, it's kind of like kind of like normal plaque, but on, <laughs> on Stim crack. That sounds awful. Yeah. I don't think you want that in your mouth. That would be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a nightmare. Dave Sprite. Getting a preemptive missile turret. He's scared of invisible units here. He should be. Invisible units are brutal. Well, yeah, when you see that Twilight Council, uh, you, you pretty much have to think blink is possible, TTs are possible, and at that point you have to make kind of a a risk to say either I'm going to just not defend one piece and keep doing something else, or and hope he doesn't do that thing, or just a little bit of token token defense for it, which you know, most people opt for that. Like the, the little the uh, missile turret right here is actually a really nice choice. Any ETT that comes up here, he could get into the natural, but uh, he got a second missile turret up there, so this covers his entry into the base with us in like a war prison. Yeah, pretty good coverage. He's got one in the mineral line too. Yeah, so. And then he's got this bunker at the back of his base, which is more just for anti-blink. It's plus one, nearly complete for both players. Sell at leg speed. So we're gonna get charge lots up in here. Yeah. As well as a Templar archives. So it's looking to me a little bit like this is just. This may actually just be a gateway up into his... Uh, yeah, it's a Zealot Archon army. He's actually not going to do either of those things. It's one of the benefits of uh, having this particular tech is that uh, they do have to divert some resources to make sure making sure they're okay from that stuff, but ultimately isn't necessarily what it's going for. Still, uh, we have a little biotech coming out across the map here. There should be... This is going to come down to force fields. Force fields and positioning. But... Force fields and positioning, yep. I do like I do like Zealot Archon versus Terran though. Everything Terran is pretty much bio except tanks. So if you get a giant bio army, you mix in Colossi with some Archons, maybe even Storm, which is uh, researching right now. Storm's pretty good too if you don't go the Archon route. Just uh, massive, terrible, terrible damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave Sprite pushing forward on the map a little bit. He's checking for a third. He's not gonna find one. Good on him to check, though, make sure that he is still ahead economically. So, um, is, has this improved at all, or is it still just as bad? Yeah, you sound a little better. Stuttering game's okay. a little worse, but... Should be okay. I put it down to low graphics. Oh, no. <laughs> and, killed, and then I killed all the sound. So... <laughs> uh, yeah. That's no attempt to drop there by Dave Sprite. Get into the base, but uh, Stalker was there to turn him away. Pretty beefy army here up front. He's going to be kind of wary of uh, engaging into this. 
That's something you don't want to jump on with Marines. No, no. Hmm. Yeah, both players continuing to macro. Dave Sprite getting his third command center floating around here. He's taking it straight to the gold base. Ooh, ooh good feedback there. Knocks a uh, in knocks someone back out of the sky. He's gonna sit in though. And uh, like some warpings there, so yeah, you can't really get anything done. Yep, lost a full medevac. Nice hold by the force field. There's one coming from the other side though, toward the natural. He's got an observer in position to scout this out, so it shouldn't be too difficult for him to move something over into position as long as he's actually watching the mini map. Uh, and I don't think he is. No, he's got a cannon, gonna start. Picking away at this medevac here, but by the time it ooh, Dave Sprite pulls away. Oh wow, he's still he's just keeping his attention with this other medevac on this side. Well, he's able to feedback it out of the air, and he's gonna he's gonna shut that down. But here comes a bunch of marauders, fucking down the cannon and getting out of there. Ooh. Still, it's annoying for Forest Field for sure. And I think against a weaker player, this would throw off their macro really hard. But uh, Forest Field's really dealing with this well. Drop that cannon and force the photon overcharge out. A lot of energy wasted there, but uh, it should be back by the time he tries to drop again or attack. At this point, you know, I don't think it'd be too much of a problem. Hmm. Yeah, force field going for a third as well. Uh, it is not gold, however. So eventually, no. we'll see. <laughs> we'll see Dave Spray pulling into the lead here economically for for a short time. Yeah, he's going to end up with a, a very large amount of minerals. I've always wondered about this. I wonder what optimal saturation is supposed to be on these things, if it's still just two SCVs per patch. Mm. I don't know, because they, they do the work of two SCVs, right, when they're on the gold? More or less. So, uh, I don't know if it's exactly that. It might be slightly less, but they mine out pretty quickly, so it's like... Mm. Yeah. I don't know what you do there. Yep, you don't want to waste mules on it either, because apparently mules don't benefit from the gold. Oh, we have an attack gearing up over here. The army is slightly out of position. Nexus has just finished, so he needs to come up here and defend this position. It does have a number of Archons and Zells with charge, though, so it's, it's going to be difficult for Dave Sprite to engage into this. He can uh, poke at the edges, though. We thought he would get an Archon there, but nope. Both players have plus one, plus one, so there's no real upgrade advantage here for either either player. But yeah, nope. that's still scary. A lot of zealots on those squishy marines, and they do not... Oh, they do have combat shield. Oh, no, they don't. Yes, they do! I don't know! Yes, they do. <laughs> Just They're turned the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about There you go. Now, he's actually going to be able to focus down just excellent. He needs to run that up. There, there is way too much anti-bio ball nonsense going on down there. Nice pickup of some of the entry units. And, uh, should be a good way with a lot of this. So, I swing up there to try and... Fortunately, those Marines down there, sacrifices for the cause. Getting money storms off, though, forcing Dave Sprite to turn around. Yeah, that's, that's something as a Terran player. You don't want to be flying medevacs through inclement weather like that. Nope. You do have ghosts out in the field now, which is should be extremely excellent against this composition if you can get to be, uh reasonable bio ball size, he can shut it down pretty hard. The Pretty much what this comes down to then is a kind of micro dance between the ghosts and the high templar. The high templar want to kind of zone the ghosts out, be able to storm the army. The ghosts want to be able to shut the high templar out with EMP. And this is the phase of the game that I, as a Protoss player, tend to die in. <laughs> yeah. I am bad at controlling high templar. Things get pretty beefy, and you gotta have those storms. You just, you have to have them. Forcefield dropping his own base at the gold, in addition to his third. Yeah, this is an interesting moment as a, uh, as a, really as a StarCraft player in general, is, a, is the way golds affect the game. They're awesome for Protoss in late game. They give you basically just free zealots that you can start warping in randomly all over the map, and, uh, that way, though he hasn't been able to spread out any pylons, so that may not be happening. Instead, Ooh. he's got a bunch of zealots that can get picked off. Oh, there goes the Nexus. Except yep, four zealots, 400 minerals. Spotted him with the Zelnaga tower, picked him off. A couple zealots running into Dave Sprite's gold uh, <laughs> mineral line here. 
doing some damage before he realizes this is a huge I'm picking, picking up a couple, but it, honestly, at this point, losing individual SCVs, not really. A, well, okay, man, he's starting to see, he's still bleeding out here, which isn't good. But uh, losing individual SCVs, not as scary as losing an entire base, which is looks like it's about to happen. Oh, force field, good reflexes, canceling that right before it can get taken out. Canceled. Army's moving in to intercept. Oh, ghosts, EMP on everything. Archon's losing their shields. Yeah, he, he's able to soften up the first they, they, um, bleh, the primary portion of the army, but there was nothing to deal with the high temp. Oh, wow, so many high templars suiciding into the army. Did not gain their storms off, and as a result, the, the Protoss army is just folded. It's out. Get out. Warpins are happening. So try and make up for it, but that's wow. brutal loss. Those two storms were great, but yeah, you needed more. You needed more. Um, those high templars just. The upside for the Protoss is we had a storm go off at the gold, but, um, again, I mean. He's got 3,000 minerals. He's not going to be hurting for that. <laughs> no, definitely not. The, the gas, you probably wish he could have that, but he can repopulate that very, very quickly. Um, unfortunately, yeah, it's not going to do anything about this army that is now killing his third expansion. The Nexus went down. Marines wreaking havoc here. Losing, uh, losing a couple pylons, but you know, there's not enough supply to even supply block yourself, so... <laughs> not, not too much of a worry at this point. No. Dave Sprite scanning at the front, see what kind of army uh, force fields have. It's not much, not much at this point, unfortunately. Reeling from that loss, that's just terrible. Trying to get plus two to back that up. Uh, Terran's moving up to plus three, though. Absolutely brutal. Brutal lead. This is, this is um, an extremely, extremely scary position for the Protoss. He's starved on gas now at a time he needs to rebuild his army. He's going to, and pretty much what he's chosen to do here is he's he's gotten the Archons back. He's getting a couple of High Templar, but you'll notice no sentries. So there's not going to be any force fields possible for this army. You have to sacrifice something when you've been pushed back like that. Plus, he had some gas stored up. So the thing is, though, if he loses the gas in this army, it's going to be pretty hard to get it back. Not going to feel very good, no. Uh, army's dancing here around this rock formation. There's no storms, but uh, Dave Spray doesn't know that. So he's just going to move around the edges. He's just looking for every attempt to create a base and turning it off. Doesn't know about this one down here, though. That's probably smart on uh, Force Field's part to expand down there instead. Yep, army's moving around. Trying to get this gold stuff. Okay. Well, uh, looks like things are starting to settle down a little bit. I mean, if uh, Force Field can secure that base on there, take the two gases, he will at least be able to hang on for a little while economically, but he needs some money, Storms. He's got Ooh, one. Wow. Holy crap. And a feedback on a couple of the medevacs. Takes out a chunk of the army, but here comes some more good, good EMPs. It, uh, rips off the shields of most of those units. And uh, still have most of the army back up. He's able to spread it out pretty decently. And uh, I think he's fine. Yep. Up upgrade advantage there is really showing right now. Well, no, actually, there is no upgrade advantage. It's not done. Nope. Damn plus it. Three's, plus three is going to be there. Not having WCS sucks. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Just got to use those hotkeys, man. My, my, oh, God. The no. cheeky. Um, no, what, what happened there, a really big thing, is just that, yeah, he had a good storm in there, but there wasn't anything to really back that up. The EMPs did essentially more damage. Now, this army from Dave Sprite is really badly bruised, though. There aren't really any medevacs here to, to heal it up, so any further storms that eventually happen really going to do a number on this army. But uh, at this point, it doesn't look like that's a huge concern for Dave Sprite, nope. as he is essentially 50, yeah, 60 supply ahead. Yep, and he's got a couple EMPs here, too, so this small army, I mean, including the High Templars, if he can get those EMPs off, I mean, this is pretty much over, unfortunately, for Force Field. There's no way he can reinforce fast enough. He's got a couple gates, or gates, bases, yep. over here in the bottom left corner, but... Drop coming up into the main base, and this is super frustrating. He doesn't have Force... He doesn't have uh, Templar up here anymore, so he gets to drop off. Yeah, there's some Zealots warped in, but uh, he's got that attack upgrade now, and it's going to take a lot to get rid of this. Yeah, he had to sacrifice three Zealots. Oh, never mind, he gets the whole drop. Nice. Oh man, really a scan on Dave Sprite's army would be so crucial right now. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's gonna... <laughs> he hasn't noticed the observers. <laughs> a couple of observers tagging along here. Oh. 
<laughs> this is amazing for four two. Anytime you can actually pull this off, it feels super super good. And unfortunately, he's got an army following him behind him, and uh, there's a storm. But it's not going to get here before the rest of the army does. Here comes the attack. Ghost pulling over here to throw down the EMP on the zealots. They actually were able to get in a lot of their damage, though, and I think this little squad up here is more or less, more or less dead. High Templar, no. Boom. Ooh, use a storm to finish it off. Took care of that. But it's A-OK, -okay, because there's another giant army up here. <laughs> Yikes. So, Dave Sprite found this one over here on the left, trying to get that picked off before Force Field realizes, but Army showed up. Yeah. Hiding the bases was a decent idea in the short term to get some economy rolling, get some gas into his pocket, but the problem is in the long run, he can't defend both sides of this area. It's too much space. He's going to be forced to eventually, he could be uh, just forced to make a choice of I can economy or I can have all my tech, tech got it. Or I can, because it's like, oh boy, he's got Colossus now. Ooh, Colossus is out. Do we have uh, Thermal Lance? No. There is no Thermal Lance. It's going to be a little rough. This is amazing. Whoa! But it's really enough. But there isn't anything really here to back this guy up. Colossus goes down, the Templar go down again. And this is looking really, really good for Dave Sprite. His opponent is all the way down to 50 supply. There are four observers clustered together for some reason following the, the army around. And there's a GG well played for Mr. Forcefield. That's game one. Just uh, taken off. Couldn't couldn't really handle that, unfortunately. Okay. So um, before we move any further into our next game, which is going to be on overgrowth, uh, A, am I still roboting really hard? No, you're not anymore. There's still a stutter in game, though. Um, you having issues with graphics at all? No, I wasn't really. Okay. So it's I mean, probably, I don't. Probably coming from my end. I'm gonna take a quick break. Let me reboot the router, try and okay. see if I can optimize some things, and then we will be. Uh... I will do likewise. All right. So we will be right back, guys. Yep. Stick around. Back in a few moments.